Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media I am Dr Nick Nick I'm a cardiologist from Houston Texas this is a lecture in series about your heart in this presentation we are going to be focusing on what type of fish is good for heart health so let us look at all different kinds of fish what do they provide how much you need to take and how it's going to benefit your overall cardiovascular risk whenever we are talking about fish you know people think about like salmon catfish shrimp and a whole bunch of other lot of things shells crawfish lobster and a whole bunch of things which i don't even know like this octopus here the question is how are you going to decide which kind of fish is best for you and how much you should be consuming and how it's going to help you in the long run fish diet is called as the pescatarian diet this is the first time i found out to what pesca means it's a fish in spanish so if you're spanish speaking that should be pretty easy to recognize the word pesca if you are eating fish for diet on a regular basis you are on a pescatarian diet let us look at some of the benefits of uh, fish and like beef or pork which is marbled with uh, saturated fat salmon has uh, omega 3 fatty acids uh, which are highly beneficial in terms of lowering cholesterol and lowering cardiovascular risk so if you look at like 100 grams or 3 ounces or 100 grams roughly of salmon gives you 144 calories only 6 grams of fat 21 grams of protein and 840 mg of omega fatty omega 3 fatty acids plus it also provides you with vitamin b12 vitamin d and selenium If you go down the list as you can see mackerel is supposed to, to be having a much higher fat content but also increase amount of uh, omega 3 fatty acids and here is your catfish which is uh, having like 6 grams of fat 16 grams of protein and a very very small amount of uh, omega 3 fatty acids and especially unless it's from a, like a like a wild catfish most of the time you get what's called a formed catfish which is not feeding on the the debris in the bottom of the lake or the ocean those kind of catfish have much lower levels of omega 3 fatty acids as compared to the naturally occurring catfish and whatever your choices you can look at these different items and basically i think we need to focus on the amount of fat and particularly the omega 3 fatty acids as you can see here and along with that vitamins and minerals how much omega 3 fatty acids do each one of these categories of fish have for example rainbow trout it has 1.1 g of omega 3 fatty acid according to this one report whereas salmon has 2 2.6 grams of uh, omega 3 fatty acids per 100 grams uh, serving size and here's a different chart this is from the USDA nutrition site here they show mackerel is supposed to have the highest content of uh, omega 3 fatty acids followed by atlantic salmon again the salmon that is sold in some of the stores may not be wild alaskan salmon it is a wild alaskan salmon that is supposed to be rich in omega 3 fatty acids make a note of that i don't think they're going to list how many grams of omega 3 fatty acids they have but nonetheless uh, formed atlantic salmon has a much lower omega 3 fatty acid content compared to wild alaskan salmon the catfish has a very very small amount compared to mackerel or atlantic salmon and especially beef pork and chicken have hardly any 
omega-3 fatty acids. That's one important element we need to keep in mind. The next thing is how much meat or fish you should be eating. The recommendations are at least you should consume fish two to three times a week. That's replacing the red meat and pork with high fat content so that you get good omega-3 fatty acids. You also get your protein plus you get your minerals and vitamins. Four to six ounces of uh, fish, two to three servings should be adequate to provide you those benefits and also reduce cardiovascular risk. Here are some of the pros of uh, fish diets. One, you get lean meat source compared to a ground beef or processed meat. I have a separate video on is meat good or bad for your heart. Please watch that one so then you can compare these two reports. As I mentioned before, it also has calcium, iron. Calcium is an important uh, mineral to maintain your bone strength, especially in the older ages. Omega-3 fatty acids, which I talked about. These fish diets have been shown to reduce diabetes and osteoporosis. And of course, the osteoporosis is... Uh, reduce because of increased calcium intake and it also lowers total cholesterol and decreases the heart disease risk and this is supposed to help in reducing weight because you are getting lean protein you don't have all that extra added fat which adds up to your belt size what are some of the cons as far as fish diet is concerned one is smell you know, sometimes it's very hard to get over the smell. And I'll talk about how to preserve your fish in the next slide. The other problem we have found is uh, the exposure to mercury. Mercury poison is an important element that we need to be keeping in mind when we are talking about fish. Because uh, if you take fish oil capsules, it could have a high mercury content and that can lead to skin rashes and also mental uh, illness. So I would be very careful about selecting the fish which has the least amount of uh, mercury. And also these chemicals that are added uh, to the ponds and water uh, lakes that can also enter into the body. And if it's a wild fish, of course, they swallow plastic and all these different kinds of stuff. And you may be exposed to those microplastic uh, elements, which could be harmful. And here's a chart showing the seafoods and their mercury content, like shark, swordfish, king mackerel tilefish these are all supposed to be high in mercury levels the low ones are the an anchovy and herring I, I don't even know salmon <laughs> sardine and haddock i don't eat all these fish the ones i usually consume are like a grilled catfish or a grilled salmon i can do an excellent gr grilled salmon in the house using indian spices boy does it taste good when it comes to storing fish, here are some tips. Make sure you buy the fresh catch. The fish is only good for about five days once it's uh, refrigerated or frozen. The fish should be chilled immediately after catching. And if you are going to the lake to catch fish, make sure that you have ice uh, boxes to chill the fish as soon as it is caught. And look at the fish, you know, if there's the skin and see if it's moist and if it looks fresh. Also, how does it smell? I mean, you don't have to be standing very close to it to see how it smells. And if it smells, the chances are it might have been sitting outside at room temperature for some time and that's something you really want to avoid. 
and there are different forms of uh, preparations that can be done. The best one is of course the grilled salmon with the salad. I do that with Caesar salad. That's my favorite. And you can also have a fish curry. You know, it's very popular in India to have fish curry. Some places are extremely famous uh, for fish curries. The simpler method would be to get a grilled uh, fish sandwich. And sometimes in the restaurants you get a fried fish sandwich. And of course this may probably be the worst one because it is fried and along with that you have french fries. So it's adding a lot of calories, it's adding a lot of carbohydrates, it's also adding fats with some of which may have trans fatty acids. So settle down for a grilled Cajun catfish or salmon or something with your favorite seasoning. I mean that may be the best option to make sure that you add at least two servings of fish per week. That will help you to reduce your red marbled meat and also reduce the amount of saturated fat that you're going to get with the added benefit of lowering your cholesterol and reducing your cardiovascular risk. So ladies and gentlemen, here's a chart which gives you the calorie content, fat, protein, omega-3 fatty acids and vitamins and selenium depending on whether you like salmon, catfish, pollock, rainbow trout, mackerel or whatever your choice may be. I hope this has been quite uh, useful to you in terms of one, selecting the kind of fish you like Number two, looking for some of the, the problems related to fish, namely mercurial poisoning and the best way to prepare your fish. Thank you so much and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a series of presentations on your heart and your heart health. Please do watch them and please do subscribe to our channel. And I will see you in the next video. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. Thank you so much.